This is a demonstration of some part modeling in Fusion and we're going to try and make this part here uh, which is a 30 degree adapter with uh, some appropriate fittings to fit into um, other parts. So you can see I've got a drawing here uh, which covers some of the dimensions. Um, the first thing that I just want to talk about is whenever we start doing a CAD model um, it can be useful just to think about what what it is that we're making and what kind of shapes are making it up. And so I think with this part here, perhaps I can just zoom in slightly. Um, it's got this square base uh, visible there and it's got a round top and then those two are connected by some kind of hollow tube. So I think that's the the first thing to note in CAD is that we're going to make a square base around top and connect them up with a hollow tube. Um, okay, let's move on uh, and start making things. So this is the uh, dimensions of the base plate. It's 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters, uh, 15 millimeters high, and it's got 14 millimeter radius on its corners. Um, so this is the fusion environment. Um, just one note in case you were wondering, I've made my mouse slightly larger uh, the, than yours probably will be, just so it's clearly visible. Um, the general way that we work in Fusion is we create a sketch and then that gives us a two-dimensional picture and we turn that two-dimensional picture somehow into a three-dimensional picture. Um, the last thing I want to say before I start is that I'm using a three button mouse and I'm going to use all three buttons, uh, s including the, the middle button is a scroll wheel, so you might want that. Okay, so let's start by creating a sketch and Fusion gives us uh, three default options about where to, to create that, uh, either on the bottom plane uh, or on one of two side planes. Um, it doesn't really matter which you choose, but often if something's going to be considered as maybe sitting on a table, then you want it to be on the bottom plane. And if you might consider it as being on a wall or something like that, then you put it on the side plane. So I'm going to sketch on the bottom plane. Um, there are different options here for what we can do. I could do a two point rectangle, uh, which would um, allow me to draw a rectangle, something like that. Um, but I'm not going to create that rectangle. Uh, I'll undo that two point rectangle because one thing that we always want to do uh, in Fusion is to keep as much symmetry as possible. So I think it's going to help me in the future if I choose this center rectangle option and drag out a rectangle that looks something like this. Um, as well as using my mouse, I'll be using my keyboard. I'm going to type 100, uh, which is the dimension on that side, and then I'm going to press tab to jump to the other dimension, uh, which is also 100, and that's the rectangle that I wanted to make, or the square that I wanted to make. And I hit return, um, and so now you can see that square clearly. Okay, and now if I press finish sketch, then what we can do is to turn that into a three-dimensional shape and to do that I'm going to use the extrude function. The extrude function's already realized that I want to extrude this square here and we want to extrude it by 15 millimeters so I type in 15 and hit return. That's pretty close now to what we wanted um, but the uh, next thing that I want to do is to create the fillets on the corners. And there were uh, one, two, three. Um, the final one I want to get to, well, I can click it there uh, and I would be able to choose it, but often I'll want to um, move my object around in the window. And to do that, I'm gonna spend a lot of time uh, holding down the middle mouse button, my scroll, wheel. I click and hold my scroll wheel and then I can start to move things. So if I just hold the scroll wheel on its own, I can pan like this. If I hold control and the scroll wheel, 
Uh, that just pans too. And if I hold shift in the scroll wheel, then I can rotate things in three dimensions. So it's worth taking some time just to practice that three dimensional manipulation. Um, it takes a bit of practice, but you get there quite quickly once you start. Um, and then I'm going to choose this other fourth uh, corner that I wanted. I'll just bring up my, uh, my dimensions again to remind myself that I want that to be R14. And so in this box here, I can type 14. And that is my uh, 30 degree adapter underway and started. Uh, I've got roughly the, the base plate made up. OK, the next thing that I'm going to do um, is to go on and sketch um, the, the line along the centre of that hollow tube. Uh, and amongst other things, that line is going to tell me where to put the disc that sits at the top uh, of the, the 30 degree adapter. Um, you'll notice there I just zoomed out and then zoomed back in again and I'm using my scroll wheel to do that so I can scroll forward to zoom out and back to zoom in. Um, okay, the picture that we're going to base things on is this picture here. Uh, you might even want to just screenshot it. Um, we need a 30 millimeter line upwards, straight up, and then there's an arc and we'll come back and think about that arc and then there's another 30 millimeter straight line. Um, so we need to create another sketch. Um, this is where we need to think about the symmetry. Uh, we want this to go straight. The, the, the line should start right in the center of our um, part. And so I'm going to sketch on this plane here. And that means I'll be in the center of the part. One thing we can do is to um, click on this slice option over here and that'll mean rather than uh, looking at the edge of the part, I'll just show you this in three dimensions, if I slice we're looking at the actual plane that we're drawing on, uh, which can be more useful sometimes. Um, for my sketch I'm going to use the line tool. Um, we said there's a 30 millimeter line uh, it's actually snapping to that already, so I'll just uh, choose to, to snap. And then I'm going to hit escape on the keyboard because the next thing I want is actually an arc. Uh, and I'll go with a three-point arc. Um, it's worth spending some time practicing all these things, of course. But with a three-point arc, you place the first point, so I clicked here. Then you place the second point, so I'll click somewhere there. And then you place... Uh, the a third point which sort of decides um, what the curvature of that arc will be. What we want is for this to be a tangent here uh, and you'll see it, it kind of snaps to that. Uh, you'll often see fusion uh, snapping to um, certain constraints. Uh, most of the time it's pretty um, helpful software and it snaps to where you want. Sometimes you may find you get a frustrating situation where it's uh, snapped to um, a constraint that you didn't want in place and you have to delete that constraint. So let's just take a quick look at that now. Uh, if I uh, click, left click, then um, th that arc is created and if I hit escape then I stop making arcs. Um, if I decided that I didn't want this to be a tangent constraint here then I'd have to find the marker which indicates a tangent constraint. Uh, I'll just show you. I can grab, for example, this end of the um, of the arc and move it around, but this remains resolutely a straight line from there to, to the start of the arc. But if I delete the tangent constraint, uh, now you'll see it moves. Uh, it's no longer necessarily tangent. And then if I want to put that tangent back in, again I hit escape. Um, you're, in, in Fusion you often want to have your finger hovering near the escape key uh, because it sort of backs you out of whatever you've clicked on and so usually you want to hit escape um, fairly frequently. Uh, so if I use the tangent constraint between there and there then uh, we get back to where we were. 
Um, the next thing that was on my diagram, I think, is that this arc should have a radius of 100. I can bring the diagram back up again. That's this R100. Um, oh, well, let's. I, I could do that now and it would be fine. But let's go on and draw the other line. There were two lines involved. Um, and this one should be 30 millimeters long again. Uh, and it looks like maybe I didn't get a tangent constraint there. So I'll choose that we want a tangent between there and there. OK, that's good. Uh, things are starting to look about like I want them. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is to put in a couple more dimensions. Whenever you want to add in a dimension, you can go create sketch dimension like that. Or if I just hit escape, the other thing that I can do is to press D on the keyboard. And the first dimension that I want is now I will put in that uh, 100 millimeter radius, 100 there. And the second dimension that I want, uh, you may have seen on the um, on the briefing information, we want this 30 degrees uh, here. And it's 30 degrees. We just need to think about this dimension. It's 30 degrees between there and a vertical line, but we don't have a vertical line anywhere here. But we do have a vertical line there down at the bottom. So I can make this angle by choosing, uh, I'll do this one more time, uh, If uh, hit, hit escape a few times to, to cancel out of that, uh, D for dimension, and then I want the angle to be between this line and this line. And you'll see once you choose two lines, it jumps from a distance dimension to an angle dimension. So that's giving me 41 degrees, but we want 30 degrees. Um, and most things there are locked in place now. Uh, ah, I was interested. Um, you'll see this line here is black, uh, which usually is used to indicate that something's completely constrained. It can't be changed. These two are in blue, which means something's not fully constrained. And so what I did was I just kind of moved things around to see what, what was unconstrained uh, and um, what was locked in place. And you can see that it's the length of this line here that hasn't been fixed at 30. So if I say D for dimension and then um, uh, drag that dimension out and type 30 and hit return, now everything's jumped to being black, uh, which means it's uh, fixed in place. And uh, so I'm pretty happy with that sketch. And I'm going to say finish sketch. Um, over here on the left, uh, we've got what's called the model tree. Uh, there's one body, which is the solid object we've made. And then we've had two sketches. The first sketch, uh, I can probably show you. Uh, these buttons here turn visibility on and off. So they're like an, an eye um, to indicate that you can see something or you can't see something. So I can, uh, if I just move this around again, I'm using shift and holding the middle mouse button to move that around. Uh, if I sh make the sketch visible, you can see it's the square that we used to start this extrude here. And then the second sketch that we can see is uh, the, the line that we've just made. OK, uh, one more thing I'll do right now is to save this. Um, I will show you, I've got a folder that I've made called Engineering Design Exercises. Um, Having a good folder structure is useful in uh, lots of uh, software applications and it's useful in Fusion. So I recommend you uh, go to your home page and then make a new folder and call it something like engineering design exercises. And then we can uh, press so, uh, save. And I'm going to call this a 30 degree adapter. You'll notice I've got a previous version saved. Uh, that was just uh, something I did very quickly just to demonstrate the um, overall structure of it. But this one, the basic one, doesn't have the correct dimensions. So now I've got one that's got the correct dimensions. And I can hit save. 
and you can see uh, in my uh, data window here uh, now my new version the 30 degree adapter is saved so I'll close up that uh, data window um, and what I want to do next is go back to the instructions and have a look at the next page so now uh, what we want is a rectangle it's uh, this point here is the corner of the or the top of that line that we've just drawn and then we come back 10 millimeters and out 55 millimeters uh, so to do that I'm going to start a new sketch uh, this will be a third sketch but I'm going to keep it on the uh, same plane that we were using before so that kind of central plane that again if I slice you can see that it's the plane through the middle of the object and uh, taking advantage of symmetry. And if I click on left up here, then we'll, we'll get the view we want. Um, we want a rectangle, but if you do two point rectangle, it's always gonna be horizontal and vertical. And we want ours to be at a slight angle. So I'm gonna go create rectangle, three point rectangle, uh, now you can see a second uh, thing that I just need to think about. The uh, previous sketch we did, I'm just going to hit escape for a second while I explain this. So uh, sketch two is uh, that uh, previous sketch we did here, the, the um, line, arc and line. And now we're in sketch three. But what I want is for sketch three to kind of overlap with some of sketch two uh, to use similar um, points and in fact I want this line here to to be uh, used so what I can do is say create and then there's this project include button and I can project from a previous sketch into this sketch and what I'll do is I'll project this line sometimes it can be useful too to project a point so I might just project that point as well just so I've got it you'll see I've selected two things that's the line and the point and I can hit OK and now if I turn off sketch two, you'll see that that line and that point are uh, still in visible in sketch three when we work on sketch three. Um, I'll turn sketch two back on just uh, because we'll want to remember it's there. So now I can say, okay, I want this three point rectangle. Uh, point one is the end of the line. For point two, I'm gonna come back a bit. Uh, I want this to be 10 millimeters in the end, but for now I'm just gonna choose any length and then I'll set up my dimensions later and similarly I want this one to be 55 uh, but I can put that in later uh, so you can see uh, some things are fixed and some things aren't fixed these two lines here are still blue and that's because I haven't got those dimensions in so again D for dimension on the keyboard and then I can click on that line drag it out and say 10 millimeters D for dimension again, click on that line and say 55 millimeters and everything is pretty well fixed in place there and I'm happy with that. I'll just bring this diagram up again and check. Yes, that looks the same uh, as what I've got. Uh, so I can say, okay, uh, finish sketch. Uh, next, let's bring the, uh, the next page of the model up. Uh, Ah, and it says you can now use the revolve tool to create the disk and then we'll actually go on and model the uh, whole tube. Uh, so let's do those two things. Uh, the revolve tool is another one here under the solid modeling options, revolve. And you will see what, what happens when you choose these kinds of uh, tools is that a dialog box pops up and you have to choose various options. The profile is like the shape that I want to revolve. Uh, that's already been selected for me. I could, if I want, cancel that shape and choose something else. But in fact, uh, this is the shape I want, so I'll choose that. Um, the axis is where it's revolved about, and it revolves around this axis here. Um, you'll notice if I, depending on exactly where I hold my mouse, I don't know if you can see, maybe if I zoom in slightly, um, sometimes it's selecting this 10 millimeter line and sometimes it's selecting this 30 millimeter line it doesn't actually matter too much in this instance which one i choose but if you want if you click and hold you'll find you get um, 
everything that's underneath where you're clicking and you can choose between them. So if I want the 10 millimeter line, I would choose this one here. And you can see that has revolved um, and it looks pretty much, again, it looks like I want it to. This is the kind of uh, fusion workflow where once you've done something, you just kind of uh, move it around, make sure it's what you were expecting. Um, later, we might look at what you could do with different options in, in here. But for now, I'm going to say, OK, that is uh, a good good setup. And then uh, we saw in the instructions that the next thing we're asked to do is to create the, the tube in the middle and in fact the cut through the tube and those are a 56 millimeter circle and a 40 millimeter circle. So I just have to remember those numbers 56 and 40. And what I'm going to do is draw them, uh, I could either draw them on top of here and then sweep them along that whole length downwards or draw them on here and sweep them upwards. Uh, it doesn't matter which, so I'm going to draw them on here. So a center circle, uh, and this is 56 millimeters, and another circle, and this is 40 millimeters. And we can say, OK, finish sketch. Um, and now what I want to do is sweep. First, I'm going to do this in two sweeps. And you'll see what a sweep is in a second. Um, but first, I'm going to make uh, the whole thing as a solid, and then I'm going to cut away the middle of it. Um, if you try and do it in one sweep, you'll still have... Uh, a, 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 well, let me show you. Uh, that's maybe the easiest way to do things. So if we just tried to do it all in one sweep, and we say, say sweep that ring along that path, uh, then it, it's assuming that I want to cut it uh, because if I make it join, uh, so make it a new piece of the material, um, there's a problem. This is hollow in here, but it doesn't have the cut through the things I'd already made, the top and the bottom. So I'm going to undo that sweep. Uh, that was the wrong sweep to do. And instead, we're going to do two separate sweeps. So I'll go create sweep and I'm going to choose the whole profile. Uh, you'll see two selected, so that's the outer circle and the inner circle. And then for the path, I'll choose this path that I've created. And we want the whole thing to be joined so that we have one solid body. And I'll click OK. Now what you'll see is we, we need to uh, cut a hole through the middle of it. Um, but we've lost all the sketches we need. So you want to go back to your model tree over on the left hand side and make those sketches visible again. And in fact, uh, I've chosen the wrong one. It's sketch two and sketch four that I want. And I can create another sweep, this time just the middle uh, that I want to cut away as the profile and as the path. It's the same one again, and you'll see that it's defaulted to say cut material away, which this time is what I want. I want to cut uh, so that it's a, a hollow pipe uh, and I can hit OK. And then what I do is go back and hide those sketches. OK, so good. We've got the, the basic thing that we wanted to create now. Um, I'm just going to show you one other uh, aspect of fusion uh, while, while we're um, at a nice stage for it, which is that this is um, a, a list of each operation that you've undertaken in turn down in the bottom left here. So I can go all the way back. Uh, I can either use these arrows or I can drag and drop this slider uh, to the start. And then I can see what I did and uh, I'd have to turn on these sketches to be able to see them, but you can see all the 3D features being made and you can go back to any part of your design and uh, revisit what you did. And if you decide that you want to um, do something differently, then this is the way that you, you might want to go back and change things. So this is your model history and uh, you can use it to edit what you've done so far. And this is the model tree, which uh, describes the different 
things you've got. So we've got one body and four sketches. And again, we could use that to edit things we've done previously. So if I want to change, say, the dimensions of that first sketch, I can right click on sketch one and say edit sketch there. And that would allow me to do it. Or I can go into my model history, right click, and I get the same option to edit the sketch. Um, so things are um, never or, or very rarely fixed in, in Fusion. If you decide you did something in a way that you don't like, you can almost always go back and change that. And the model tree and the model history are the ways you do that. OK, let's keep going. Um, we've modeled the tube uh, and uh, that went well. Next, add holes to the base plate. Um, so we want a 10 millimeter diameter hole in one corner of the base plate and we'll take a standard ISO thread on a 10 millimeter hole. Um, within uh, the solid modeling options, uh, there's this option to create a hole or you can, uh, from the drop down menu, create hole or you could use the letter H on your keyboard. Um, and then what we want is to um, choose where to place that hole. So I'm going to choose that I want it to be on this face here. And then uh, I want it to be aligned with this corner. Uh, and at the moment it's far too big, so I want it to be 10 millimeters. Uh, sorry, that's the uh, height. I'll come back to that in a second. It's this dimension here, the diameter of the hole, that I want to be 10 millimeters. And that alignment hasn't quite worked. Uh, I guess instead, I was still clicking on the face that I wanted, but what we want is the reference. Okay, I'm going to cancel that face. We'll select that face, and then as a reference, happens if I go at uh, from sketch multiple holes that's not working either okay um, let's just take a second to think about this so I can move this around uh, and one option would be we know this is a 14 millimeter uh, radius on the fillet uh, in this corner um, and so I could put on dimensions to uh, that point and say it must be 14 millimeters um, from this edge and 14 millimeters from this edge. So I'll be able to get it in the right place in the end, but I'm slightly hopeful that the, there ought to be a way uh, that I can choose to align it. Ah, there we go. Uh, so I chose uh, this corner of the face or this kind of filleted uh, uh, rounded edge of the face as a reference point and now what we'll find is that this is at the center of, of that arc um, so um, I guess what's th that's a useful kind of fusion learning moment there are always lots of different ways to do things and if you just take some time remember that you can undo anything so you've never um, you've, you've never committed to, to doing something wrongly you can usually uh, find the way in Fusion to, to put things where you want them to and to make them work as you want. Um, the other thing it said is, uh, what's the extent of the hole? And at the moment we've said, make it a 10 millimeter hole. I'm gonna say uh, it should be, uh, well, first of all, I could say all, which means it will cut through uh, everything. Or I could say two, and then it'll cut to whatever I choose and I'll choose this bottom face. And then it'll always cut from the top face to the bottom face. So that's a way to do that. Uh, and I wonder, we said we wanted to put an ISO thread on it. Um, if I make it a tapped hole, Ah, there we are. Then I can have a, a standard ISO uh, metric thread and I'll just accept all of the defaults um, and say OK. And I hope 
that now looks like a threaded hole in the base there. Uh, so that's pretty good. That's uh, the kind of hole we wanted. Uh, next, we want four of those holes, uh, one in each corner. And there are two ways we could do that. Uh, I'll show you both. We could do it uh, probably the more complicated way is with a rectangular pattern. Um, we want to pattern a feature. Uh, and a feature means essentially one of these things we can choose in the model history. And we want to pattern the whole. So we want multiple copies of that whole. The directions we want are, uh, first of all, in that direction. Oh, uh, sorry, I was still selecting uh, objects. So I'll select the whole. Uh, directions, we want one here, which uh, we need to choose uh, a part of our sketch which is in that direction, so I can choose that line there. And we could also choose that we want uh, that direction. So those are the two directions we want to work in. And then I can actually just drag out, uh, in this case we want a two by two grid uh, to make up four objects. And I could drag those to the appropriate places. Um, it's a hundred millimeters across and the radius of this is 14. So the distance I want to drag is 100 minus 14 minus 14. That's 100 minus 28. So that's 72 millimeters. And I'll go 72 millimeters in this direction. Uh, and that would be the, the correct setup. And of course, as with everything I do, you want to look at it from a few angles and make sure you've got it right. Um, so that's how we do a rectangular pattern, uh, but I'm actually just going to cancel that because we can also do a, a circular pattern, uh, which is um, slightly easier in this case because we don't have to make any measurements. We know we want everything to be the same distance from the central axis. Uh, so I'm going to pattern features. Uh, the feature I want is that hole and the axis, you can try and actually pick the, the central axis, which I guess here is the, the Y axis. But the other thing you can do is pick any circle uh, or cylinder which uh, shares that axis, axis. So if I pick this face here, we'll get the pattern we want. And again, we want four objects. And now you'll see those are uh, where we want them to be. So once you've made one uh, type of a certain thing in Fusion, you can use those pattern options uh, to, to make more. OK, uh, next I will go back to the instructions. Uh, that's the, the base uh, with a circular pattern, but you can also do it with a rectangular pattern. Uh, now we want to add holes to the disk. Um, and it says use a 75 millimeter diameter circle uh, to, to locate those holes. So let's do that. We want to sketch. And before, when we've done sketches, we've chosen one of the origin planes, uh, the uh, YZ, uh, I guess this is XZ or XY planes. But now we want to actually sketch onto a new uh, face that we've made, which isn't aligned with the previous uh, origin planes. So I'm going to click on that face. This is where we want to be sketching. And then um, what I'm going to do uh, is use the project tool again, uh, P for project, or you can get it uh, from the create menu here. And I'm going to project these two circles and say, OK. Um, if I just turn off the visibility on the body now, you can see that those circles are in my sketch. And what I'm going to do next is click on them, uh, click on them one at a time, and then I'm going to press X. That's the same as clicking this construction button. So X on the keyboard, uh, and again, X. And you'll see that they are both now in construction mode. Um, that really just means that uh, they are useful to me to, to line up other 
uh, parts of what I'm doing but I don't want them to be turned into any 3D objects in the end. So sometimes construction mode can be a useful way of just making sure that something doesn't end up getting extruded or swept or, or something like that. Um, now what I need is another circle. Uh, because I've projected those two circles their center is available to me as a location. So I'll pre uh, create a circle centered on there and at 75 millimeters diameter and say OK. And I'm actually going to make that circle a construction circle as well. And now what I'm going to do is to create a line from this point here to the circle. And I'll make that a construction line. So each time I'm using X just to, to make sure that things are uh, construction rather than um, parts, uh, complete parts of my sketch. And that's because really all I'm doing here is trying to define this point. And in fact, what I can do is to create a point there at the intersection of the line and the circle I've just made, because that's where I want my hole to go. Uh, so now I can say, OK, finish sketch. All I wanted was to define that point. Uh, now I can create a hole. Uh, let me just see if there's any information about what the hole should be. Uh, I guess I could go uh, back up to the top and check it on the uh, dimension sketch. But I think it looks like it's just a, a 10 millimeter through hole from what I'm seeing there. So I'm just going to draw that for now. So we'll say, OK, we want a hole. The placement, you can see now it's easy to make it uh, sit at the point we want, uh, which is there. And I will say it should be uh, a simple hole. That means it doesn't have a thread. I want it to be 10 millimeters in diameter. And we're going to choose uh, to make it go to the rear face of uh, the, the disk that we created. So that looks about right. Again, I'm using shift and the middle mouse button to, to move things around and look at them from different angles. And the reason that I want it to go just to that face and no further is because what I don't want is if I pattern this and I get, uh, sorry, let me just uh, move things around a bit. You can see sometimes you don't get things from the angle you want. If I were to pattern this hole and get another version of it uh, down here, which I will do in the end, and I was to say just cut through everything, a hole that was here would also perhaps cut through uh, some of the other material down here, and I don't want that. So that's why I said make it just go as far as this uh, bottom face of the disk. That looks fine to me. I'll hit OK. And then the last thing that we want to do is also pattern that hole, uh, create pattern, circular pattern. We want to pattern a feature, so that's fine. And the feature we want to pattern is this last hole we created, which I'll choose from the model tree here. And the axis is going to be, again, I'll just choose a cylinder that has the axis I want. Um, I could also have chosen the outside of the disk. Uh, so it's somewhere there, uh, and then uh, choose to make four of them. Um, press OK. And if we look at that, uh, one thing I can do, for example, is to use this tool here, which is look at and then click on that face. Then we'll see that face um, front on. And I can see that those are where we want them. They're at kind of north, east, south and west on that face. So that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm happy with that. We are nearly finished with this part now. Um, a six millimeter fillet between the plate and the tube and between the disc and the tube. Uh, so the fillet option, is, uh, let me try and get this in, into the arrangement that I want, where I can see that's the place I want to see. So uh, between it's a between the plate and the tube, this is the plate. That's the tube in this definition, and we want a six millimeter fillet. So uh, I'll click on where the plate meets the tube uh, and then type six and hit return. And it also said between the disc and the tube, this is the disc, that's the tube. So again, click on the point where the disc meets the tube, 
six millimeters and hit return. So that's that first bullet point covered. Two millimeter fillets on each of the edges of the disc and the plate. Uh, I think it means these ones here. So what I can do is choose them all uh, because they're all going to have the same two millimeter fillet. I've chosen four of them and we can hit two. Next, a two millimeter equal distance chamfer to the opening in the disc. Uh, that's this opening. And chamfer is, uh, we have to use the drop down modify menu, uh, chamfer two millimeters and equal distance is the, the standard default here. So I can just hit OK. That's that one done. A two distance chamfer to the opening in the plate. Uh, one, one of them is two millimeters and one of them is four millimeters. And I can just look here to see what that's going to look like. So let's turn it over. We want a chamfer on there, but this time it's two distances. The first is two millimeters and the second is four millimeters. And that looks pretty much like I wanted it to, so I can hit OK. Um, that is now coming together quite nicely. I think we've uh, completed most of the task. Um, so the last thing it says is choose the material for your part uh, and uh, we'll use cast iron. And then we're just going to add uh, our initials to the part. And this is kind of something we'd encourage you to do in general in engineering design. Um, you know, add your own personal stamp to things. Um, it, it makes for a nice portfolio uh, in the end. So you can see I've added BL on this one and I'll do it uh, on my current one. OK, uh, first of all, to change the material, I can uh, right click on, let's say, body one and there'll be this option of physical material. It might just take a second um, and you can see all the different things we can make it out of. Uh, in this case, we were asked for cast iron, which is a metal. Uh, I can't remember if it's under C for cast iron or it looks like it's going to be under iron comma cast. Uh, there we go. So that is now uh, looking um, slightly different because we've changed the material. And then the last thing was to add some initials uh, somewhere on the part. I'm going to put them on this face here. And what I can do is to create text. Um, and the text needs to say uh, BL because those are my initials. Um, it's currently sized about right. Uh, you, you can move things around by clicking on that button. You could change the height. Uh, you could change the, the font and uh, make it bold and all kinds of other things. But actually, I'm pretty happy with, with that as uh, how I do things. So I'm going to click OK. And then that's currently a sketch. I'll finish the sketch and I'm just going to extrude. Um, what I want to do is uh, it, you can see it's trying to encourage me to extrude that whole face, but that's not what I want. I want to extrude just these initials here uh, and I'll make it. Let's start by looking at minus 0 0.5 millimeters. So uh, you can um, you can have your initials be raised off the surface or embossed into the surface. I'm going to cut uh, half a millimeter back. Uh, that's not really come out very clearly. Maybe I just didn't go far enough. Uh, so instead I'll uh, go back to the model history, right click, edit the feature. And instead of going back half a millimeter, let's go back two millimeters, uh, which is a pretty um, more significant cut. And now from, uh, from most angles, you can see the initials pretty clearly on there. Um, I guess one more thing you could do uh, since since we've started, if, if I go back and make that minus 0.5 um, and it's not very clear, if I click A, I'll get an appearance uh, set of options up 
and I could say okay let's emboss it and paint it um, so I'm gonna put it make it in uh, glossy red and then I hope I can just click on that uh, face drag the glossy red and uh, do the same here with the L and then we get that that can look quite nice as well as a way of um, again adding your own uh, personal stamp to what you're working on. So that is the uh, 30 degree adapter complete. Uh, if I click save you get the option here every time you save to to kind of put in some kind of a description of where you've got to. Um, and so I'm just going to say all tasks complete here. Um, I might come back later and change the material and then when I save I can say changed material or that kind of thing. Uh, and it's all just a way of um, assisting yourself because if you want to go back to a previous saved version or you want to know uh, what, what you did at each save point, uh, then what you've typed in that box will be visible to you later. Uh, and in fact, I can show you uh, that uh, V1 was item created and V2 was all tasks complete there. So that's where you can see that information. Um, okay, that is uh, everything completed. Uh, make sure you've saved your work. And then the last thing that, that we'd encourage you to do in uh, engineering design is to uh, find a nice view of this. Um, we'll come on to rendering later, but uh, if you've got some time, you could, uh, you could think about making a render in the render options. I'm just gonna go back to the design window and then I'm going to use the snipping tool which is available in Windows. If you search for snip and you can say new and then just drag out a box like that and then you could save that snip uh, somewhere where you'll be able to find it later and that's the first thing that we'll want you to upload to your portfolio. Uh, congratulations that's uh, the 30 degree adapter complete uh, and we'll look forward to seeing all your work.